After retaking Whiteholm Castle, Roland assumes the throne. Joy over the return of the line of Glenbrook sweeps the kingdom. Yet not everyone is quick to welcome Roland back with open arms. Life under as frosty rule treated them well, and they suspect him to be naught but a figurehead of a puppet regime. Roland's absence, it seems, made room for discord among his subjects to flourish. There you are, your majesty. Ah. Huet. Pray, do not sound so dismal. Now that we have retaken Whiteholm Castle, you are Glenbrook's rightful king. We've an entire kingdom to rebuild out of the ruins of war. Patriot and the others have been demanding utmost haste. I understand that, I do. But... Oh, Cordelia. If I should lose you too, I... I... I know you have suffered many hardships. But pray, do not let yourself succumb to despair. Me, our comrades, your people... All of us are eagerly awaiting the era of peace our new king will bring. King, eh? My father never once let his emotions overcome him. Not even the day my mother died. I had every intention of following his stoic example, but... Majesty, I bring word from the infirmary. Is it Cordelia? Pray tell me she's alright. She is indeed recovering a pace, Your Majesty. Oh, thank the stars. It seems she has something to discuss with you all, if you will hear her out. Of course. Tell her we'll speak in the garden. But only if it will not tax her over much. Yes, sire. Huet, fetch Saranoa and the rest. Tell them to come to the garden as soon as they are able. Twould be my pleasure. What is it? You're smiling. Uh, it's only... I thought it would be some time yet before I saw you look so at ease. I'll return shortly with the others. Cordelia, you've returned to me after so long. But slow and steady is the path to recovery. Yes, there is no rush. So that is what happened in my absence. Yes. Gustadolf was a clever ruler. After the invasion, Patriot and his royalists cozied up to Esperos in order to protect themselves. Gustadolf used them to his every advantage. He stripped them of their privileges and left them nothing but their governing responsibilities. I don't think Patriot much cared for that, but it did ensure everything continued smoothly without interrupting the people's lives. Now I understand why there was little unrest after the occupation began. A clean, effective takeover by a well-seasoned commander. But all the while, he was preparing to face the next conflict. Wait... Does he intend to march on Hyzant next? I believe so. I wish I could be more specific. But the Goddess' shield cannot protect the Holy State's capital from Esfrost. Not anymore. He said it will all be over once the Death Snell is ready. What is this Death Snell? A new weapon born from the coupling of his frosty ironworking and explosive projectiles. Thallus claimed it is powerful enough to break through the goddess's shield. To think Esfrost is capable of creating such a monstrosity. Ah, so much for their reign of peace. 
Taking over Glenbrook was only the first move in a bigger gambit to seize the source. I am disturbed to learn of Gustadolf's plan. But rebuilding our capital must take priority. Very well. We should investigate the extent of the damage and discuss how best to proceed from there. House Wolfort will lend whatever aid you need. Thank you, Sarah Noah. But since you are one of their saintly seven now, I'd ask you to keep an eye on Hyzant as well. Cordelia? Apologies. A brief spell of dizziness. I have been looking everywhere for you, Your Highness. A Patriot. I do not recall giving you leave of the infirmary. Your injuries are still healing. Would you undo all the trouble I went through to get you the best of care? Pray return to the infirmary at once. It wouldn't do to push yourself, Cordelia. Rest now. Leave everything to me. All right. We got a pretty good understanding of the damage in the capital, my lord. It's... Uh, a tad more than we were expecting. I see. Then we must make haste with repairs. Let's report this to Hyzant and see what aid they can give us. Was there anything of note besides damage? There ain't an easy way of putting this, but not everyone's exactly pleased to hear Prince Roland's return. Esfrost exempted Glenbrook's subjects from the salt tax. Likely a bid to get in everyone's good graces. A damn good one at that. But more than that, the so-called freedom Gustadolf brought to the kingdom seems to have made a splash. He threw out the old ways and made it so anyone could better their lot in life depending on their ability, instead of their birthright. Just as in Esfrost. Then the people must have looked quite favorably upon Gustadolf's rule. I wager folks ain't too pleased to see us since they figure it means things will go back to how they used to be. Uh, Roland surmised as much. We must do something to show the people his is a return worth celebrating. Anna, have you looked into the state of affairs in the castle? Yes. The head of the Royalists, Minister Patriot, is extending his influence. He made quite the name for himself, even under Gustadolf. Though he seems eager enough to support King Roland, he was just as eager to serve the Archduke. I do not believe we can trust him. Distinguished members of House Wolford, how hard you are all working to rebuild our capital. What a delightful thing to see. Minister, you do us a great honor visiting us out of all the many other responsibilities that must vie for your attention. Oh, come now, do not think yourself so insignificant. The entire kingdom owes you its thanks, myself included, of course. We are so grateful for House Wolford's aid even though you now serve a different master. We are only doing what any of King Roland's loyal vassals would. Ah, oh, speaking of the king, I'm afraid we've a bit of a problem. His majesty seems to be entertaining thoughts of retaliating against Esfrost. But the people have had their fill of war. And I'm sure you're already aware the people look upon the royal line with disfavor. <sighs> I only beg you take every care going forward. A warning. Even so, there is naught we can do but focus on rebuilding. Indeed. Let us return to the king and apprise him of our progress. I would walk the city with Sheila a bit longer, and speak with the people. As you wish. But this is not the capital you knew. Be careful, my love.
A coronation ceremony. Certainly there are more important matters to focus on right now. A coronation is important to assuage the people's fears and restore their faith. Besides which, it is the royalists' most fervent wish. A kingdom is only truly as strong as people believe it to be. And right now the world believes Glenbrook weak. The ceremony will be a display to the contrary. Is this truly the remedy our situation calls for? Right now I imagine the people care only for where their next hot meal will come from. Rest assured, sire, House Wolford will see your subjects shan't go hungry. But trust me when I say nothing will hasten Glenbrook's return to her former glory, so much as announcing the return of Regna's rightful heir. To win your subjects' hearts, you need do nothing but ascend to your position upon the throne. You mean sit my royal backside on a fancy chair? In a manner of speaking. A king's duty is first and foremost serving as his kingdom's symbol. You needn't trouble yourself with day-to-day -day governance. We will assume that burden. After all, you have only just been crowned. There will be no ceremony. The people will tell us what they need, and you will listen to them, Patriot. That is my command. <laughs> As you wish, King Roland. How fair things, Suet. Have the relief supplies been given to those who need it? Well, we had received a sizable shipment of goods from Hyzant, but there are complaints. It seems very few of those goods have made it into the hands of the people. And why is that? We aren't certain. Though apparently Patriot and the Royalists involve themselves with the distribution. Damn those Royalists! They cannot be left to their own devices. All right, lads and lasses, lay down your arms. Let your bruises remind you of the lessons learned today. Ah, what fortuitous timing. I still owe you for the drinks from the other evening. I wondered if I might treat you tonight. Apologies, lass, but I've got places to be. Perhaps another time. He seemed troubled by something. Perhaps I'm overthinking it. Let us end our day's work here. It is early, is it not? Is something amiss? No, nothing at all. Just my attention is required elsewhere for a time. Elsewhere? Curious. How many have you had? <laughs> Not enough. Just one for you, I take it. Yes. Went by in a flash. Can you believe it's been 30 years? The time has escaped us. The memory of that day, however, I doubt ever will. Thrice damned, can't move. Always thought I'd meet my end with a... 
beautiful lass by my side. You have many days ahead of you yet, Eridor. We will see you returned home. Don't try to run, you curs! Leave me be. I'll just slow you down. It was my cursed pride that got us into this. <laughs> Only I should suffer for it! We don't all need to die today! Run! Even in the face of death, you refuse to set aside your foolish pride. I followed you into this hell of my own will, and I will see you delivered from it. <clears throat> you fool! Charge! Come, come and die! Yeah! That would have been it for us, had Lord Simon not met their charge in time. Aye, and the only punishment for my pride were these aches that keep me awake at night. We hungered for glory all those years ago, without a care for how it would serve us later on. A couple of would-be heroes, who couldn't be convinced they weren't invincible. Yet here we are, drinking, to celebrate the end of that war. I do not wish to reminisce upon the past. A toast that I may never again repeat the mistakes of my youth. Ah, uh, but before that... Yeah? You have served House Wolfort well, Eridor. That said, I have a feeling we'll need your sturdy shield even more going forward. You need me to lead a charge? I'm your man. I'll leave anything fancier than that to you. For House Wolfort! For House Wolfort. Roland, what are you doing out here? There's hardly a better place to become lost in one's thoughts, don't you agree? I suppose. However, if aught weighs on your mind, it may serve you better to turn to a friend. Then let me ask, do you believe me too immature for my station? Not at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. But the other nobles loved to gossip of my disinterest in politics and intrigue. And mocked my love of hawking. You said it yourself. Gossip and sniping, nothing more. Pay no mind to nobles and their petty judgments. The people who matter, your subjects, hold you dearly in their hearts. Stories abound of their love for you. Hey, go peddle your junk somewhere else. And why would I do that, my good sir? I see no reason to forego such a bustling avenue simply to please a stranger. A stranger? You're posted in front of my damn shop. You're stealing my customers from right under my nose. Oh, I am? I'm not sure your lack of customers could be blamed on me. Surely the proprietor bears some responsibility for... What bickering is this? None of your business, Welp. Now leave us to our negotiations. Prince Roland? Is that really you? A prince, you say? Well, I... A distinguished gentleman such as yourself must be mortified to have your customers bear witness to this childish bickering. Uh, I'm sorry, your highness. 
My temper got the best of me. And you, merchant. If you mean to trade in Glenbrook, I trust you have procured the proper licenses and approvals. I... well, the process takes some days, you see. Pardon, your highness. Then your business shall have to wait some days, it seems. Shall I summon a member of the Kingsguard to explain the law in detail? N no, there'll be no need of that, Highness. I'll just be on my way. Thank you, Prince Roland. Come visit any time and I'll let you have your pick of my wares. Your place has always been with your people. You could walk down the main avenue and settle disputes with a single word. <laughs> Don't tell me you were watching. They were petty arguments, nothing more. As petty as they might have been, you were happy to do it. What better proof of royalty is there than that? But it wasn't because I was wise that I solved their problems. It was my name and status that let my words wait. Hmm. How do you imagine a kingdom with not a single dissatisfied soul would look? Hmm. That's a difficult thing to imagine. Indeed. I suppose the best one can hope for is to do what we can. While we can. Well... We can start envisioning such a nation, that one day we might build it, together. I like the sound of that. No doubt the answers we seek lie ahead, so long as we stay honest with ourselves. And so long as we work together, you and I, Saranoa. Do you have a moment, Gila? Oh, Frederica. Is something the matter? Well, I invited Saranoa to have dinner with me tonight. That's wonderful. Are you cooking for him? I am. I've been practicing with the book you gave me. I was hoping to finally show him what I've learned. Then allow me to help. What are you making? A warm soup full of meatballs. A hearty, meaty, savory stew to tickle the tongue and sate the stomach. Or so the book describes it. That sounds like quite a mouthful, in more ways than one. The author is rather verbose, yes. Anyhow, I also want to make an appetizer. Might you be able to lend a hand? Cooking is hardly my specialty, but... Say no more. I'd love to. Oh, dear. This is... disappointing, to say the least. And we're almost out of time. Saranoa will be back any minute now. Excuse me, Lady Frederica. Lord Saranoa has just sent word that he has been held up at a meeting. He says there is a chance he may not even return tonight. I see. Thank you for letting me know. It sounds like your dinner may get postponed. A blessing in disguise. It gives us time to cook this again and do it right this time. Lord Saranoa may not even return tonight. But there is a chance he might. And I refuse to disappoint him. Would you help me, Gila? Of course, Frederica. I shall do my very best to see this through with you. I cannot thank you enough.
The vegetables are done. Though they are a far cry from perfect. The meatballs are ready too. Now all we have to do is stew them. Frederica, I'm back. Oh, welcome back. It appears we've run out of time. I was on my way here when something urgent came to my attention. I apologize for returning so late. I know we were supposed to have dinner tonight. I am just happy you're here. Besides, I am the one who should apologize. I wanted to cook you a meal, but failed terribly on my first attempt, so it isn't yet ready. I'm sorry, Saranoa. Don't look so down, Frederica. I was delighted when you asked me to share a meal. Now that I'm back, why don't I help you with the food? Saranoa. Thank you again for inviting me. I'm overjoyed we could spend this time together. As am I. I enjoyed cooking with you as well. The time we spend together is very precious to me. I regret that my duties have been keeping us apart lately. But when I noticed the sky was even more beautiful than ever this night, I hurried home, hoping we could gaze upon its beauty together. It's strange. When I was in Esfrost, I would look up at the same sky. But it felt so much colder there. The stars seemed as if frozen. They did not twinkle the way they do now that I am with you, Saranoa. Frederica, <sighs> promise me that you will always stay by my side. I need you. Now more than ever. Of course, Saranoa. I wish to gaze up at the same sky, sit beneath the same moon, and walk the same path you do. Together. Forever and always. Under this tree. This here's the land of the Jacks clan. Or used to be more like. That clasp on your chest, that's their sigil, if I'm not mistaken. It's a memento from my parents. Or so I was told. Aye, now that I'm looking for it, I can see the resemblance. Same silvery hair and everything. Villages near here met with a pretty terrible fate. They begged the armies to spare their fields. The only one who listened was one of House Wolfort's bannermen. No one was surprised, big war hero that he was. But by the time we got here, the Jacks had been all but exterminated. He was digging graves for the dead, enemy and all. A hero and a gentleman he was. Names on the tip of my tongue. Benedict. Aye, that was it. Do you know the man? I'd like you to pass on my gratitude, if you do. Thanks for showing me the way. Your coin's all the thanks I require. If that's all you'll be needing me for, I'll leave you to it. You make a poor stalker. Ain't exactly what I'm built for. 
You fought in the battle here, didn't you? Benedict swore me to secrecy. But suppose it ain't break an oath if you already know. Oh, but first I ought to tell you. You've the right to the truth. And those ain't my words. They're his. That's why he never tried to stop you from finding out about your parents. You know of their fate? We drove the enemy up the clifftop. Cornered him there. The same instant we cut their leader down, a babe cried out in the distance. In the hideout, we found you, all swaddled up. A letter pinned to you with that same clasp on your chest. <sighs> Live strong, Anna. Stronger than any. I see now. Your family died at our hands. If it's vengeance you want, you can take it out on me. That doesn't sound like the Eridor I know. Do you think so little of me? To assume I would forsake my friend, bloody my hands with revenge. I know the truth at last. That is enough. Is it, Anna? Or are you forcing it to be? Don't be a fool. Benedict is the one who raised me. If I ever want for a father, I know where to find him. When we've won this war, I shall make sure he understands that. Made it in time, my lord. Eridor, you came. Lady Destra, your mother was loved by one and all, my lord. Honoring her this day is the least we can do. Is it just you here, my lord? We are beset on all sides by tasks large and small. I would not impose my familial obligations on the others. <laughs> Spoken like a true leader. Me and your mother may not have been family by blood, but duty bound us just as close. I am sure she would have been overjoyed to see you by my side. I never had a chance to know her. My only memories are from stories others told me. And still, I somehow can feel the warmth of her embrace, hear the loving sound of her voice. She was smitten, that is true. She held on to you so tightly, I reckon not even the Dawn Spear could have pried you from her. <laughs> Did she? Lady Destra's smile was brighter than the sun, and near as constant. She treated young Benedict and I like little brothers, though at times we weren't so deserving of her care. Even so, she always had a kind word and worry enough to spare. There weren't a woman like her in all of Narzilia. I did not know the bond between you three ran so deep. Benedict never mentioned it. His lips aren't as loose as mine, especially when it comes to Lady Destra. Speaking of which, here. Your mother would have loved to get one of these from you. A snowbell? My father mentioned her fondness for these flowers. Every year when I visited her, without fail, one of these would be placed in front of her grave. Was that you all this time? Uh, well, not exactly, my lord. They're quite rare, are they not? I often search for them, but I have yet to see one in bloom. Where did you find it? Ah, uh, well, I made a journey down south, 
Benedict insisted. Apologies for my absence, my lord. There is not to apologize for. It was a thoughtful gesture, and I thank you for it. Somehow, I can feel Mother smiling down upon us. <laughs> More than I deserve, if I'm being honest. Huh. There's already a snowbell. Who could have... Should have known. Nothing will stop him from his duty. What was that? Hmm? Uh, it was nothing, my lord. Seems we're not the only ones carrying a torch for Lady Destra. Indeed. We are fortunate to be part of such a close-knit house. And that is thanks to those who serve it. I trust I'll see you here again in a year's time, Arador. Of course, my lord. Snowbells might capture a moment in time, but your mother inspired loyalty for an eternity. Many of the Minister Archibald. And flee we must. I'll hold him here, but you lock. Retreat. Minister Archibald! No. This cannot be how it ends. Don't you draw breath? My heart yet beats. This place shall not be my grave! So the cycle of war and chaos begins anew. And once again I must take up my bow. Watching you fight from afar. And I like what I see. Almost reminds me of myself in my younger days. You flatter me. Still, I doubt you'll emerge victorious. Without me on your side, that is. The name's Archibald. Allow me into your ranks, and you will see. I can match men half my age, shot for shot. I couldn't ask one so elderly to risk his life in battle. This Greybeard survived a salt iron war with not but the bow in his back, I'll have you know. And my aim is just as sharp now as it was then. I haven't many years left, lad, and I'd like to spend them fighting for a just cause. If that is what you wish, I shall not refuse. We welcome your bow.
At it again, eh? You know, even the Dawn Spear set down his weapon on occasion. We are at war. I cannot hope to end it by being idle. <laughs> Spoken like a true member of the Kingsguard. You lot were always too serious for my tastes. We were not serious enough. Where is the king we were meant to protect now? What will become of his kingdom? <sighs> king Regna and Crown Prince Franny are no more. Only Roland and Cordelia remain. When I think of how lonely my charge must feel, I almost feel smothered by the guilt. If he's lonely, he hides it well. Could be that losing his princely obligations has lifted a weight off his shoulders. And who are you to speak on his feelings? His father ever doted on Franny. He knew precious few moments of his mother's love before she passed. Even so, he tried his utmost to never show weakness in front of his sister. He was there for her in the worst of times. There was never a place near the throne for him. Truth be told, Sir Maxwell was more of a father to him than anyone. I'd like to think I have been more than his guard. Oftentimes, I felt like his... confidant. You and Flugi are constant companions. As I said before, my prince, he is more than my companion. He is the truest friend I could ask for. A true friend? I must admit, I envy your relationship. My prince, I did not mean to... Tis nothing to apologize for. I simply find the idea of soaring the skies with the true friend to be somewhat... romantic. You could do the same with the proper training. If it pleases you, my prince, I would gladly teach you. You would? Then I gladly accept. I trust you will go easy on me. I can promise no such thing. You must become as ferocious as a hawk yourself if you wish to ride one. War broke out soon after that. My promise to teach him is yet unfulfilled. So I will train, I will fight, until the skies are no longer clouded by the fires of war. Only then can I rest. Only then can we fly free. Perhaps then, with the wind in our faces, we can forget our stations, our titles, if only just for one moment. Uh, what was that last part? You'll have to speak up. Nothing. Nothing at all. Yes, it's back to training for me. It's become late. We best keep an eye out for bandits. You have a warrior's intuition. You needn't worry. I won't let us come to harm. It takes no great intuition to see that this world is falling ever deeper into chaos. The reasons, however, remain elusive. Will we see our way safely through this darkness? I cannot say. We have naught but our duty, and mine is to Prince Roland, whatever might become of House Wolfort. I find your perspective refreshing. Although it may be direct, you walk the path you've chosen with confidence. On the other hand, I often feel that I'm fumbling. I had thought Gustadov to be a man of reason. 
But now I see that he will not hesitate to employ deceit to achieve his goals. In a manner of speaking, he and I are not so different. I, too, once hoped to have the influence to change the nation. At least, I told myself so. Really, all I wanted was to be free. And Frederica was simply a means to that end. As long as I had what I wanted, I had no great concern for what became of her. Gila, I... But this war has caused me to reconsider that. I realize that Frederica herself is worth caring for. She's not the sheltered princess I took her to be. Her wits are a match even for Benedict. She surprised me and shamed me. I was wrong to underestimate her, to define her by her birth and station. She represents my greatest failures as a teacher, but also my greatest success. For she has truly taken my lessons to heart. I see now there is no shame in serving another, and no shame in sacrificing my freedom for something greater. Oh, but perhaps I've shared overmuch. For some reason, I find it easy to talk with you. The feeling is mutual. You are not so aloof as I thought. Ah! I've just had a thought. When the war is behind us, I may very well open my own school. Of course, you would be welcome to join me. I would be master of the classroom, and you could be master of the training yard. We could teach our students the art of hawksmanship. Our riders would be first class. Ah, what should our school be named? You will come and teach with me, won't you? Not half so aloof as I thought. I never saw myself coming this far just to be scrubbing the decks on some ship. Quiet. This is an important job, even if you think it beneath you. I... I meant no disrespect. It's just that my brother and I always figured we'd be passengers on a ship like this. I see. Was he fond of ships? Not as such, no. What's that? It's my brother. Or rather, his ashes, anyhow. Oh. Made a promise to him when we were still small, you see. When he got better, I told him we'd set off to wherever we wanted. Eat whatever we wanted. See things nobody'd seen. He always dreamt we'd find a paradise of our own and live like kings. But he never so much as left a sickbed let alone the duchy itself. I'm a terrible brother. Broke my word. As soon as I saw this ship, it all came flooding back. You needn't punish yourself. You did all you could to protect him. Thank you. I appreciate the kind words, but what's done is done. I refuse to accept that. Nothing is ever final. And I dare say, the weather is fair enough for a short test cruise. We can just take the ship out for a joyride? Don't we need his lordship's permission? I am my own person and responsible for my own actions, and the consequences of those actions. Besides, I must ensure that the ship is in working order. And you deserve a reward for your labor today. I am certain we can handle ourselves if we work together. Don't need to tell me twice.
The sea air feels wonderful. I had no idea a breeze could feel so good. He never got to go outside, you know, on account of the sickness. He just lay there, staring at the ceiling. But now he can finally see the bright blue sky and feel the winds uncaged. If only one of his dreams is fulfilled, I'm glad it's this one. Thank you, Anna. This has turned into a fine way to honor his memory. He's free now. There is no need for thanks. This is my job. Aye, uh, so you say. That don't mean I can't be grateful. accepted as for us to rule than I imagined. Glenbrook's history is long. Yet, that is why hierarchy and precedent hold sway. This is a stubborn land, my lady, not given to easy change. Though Archduke Gustadolf, acting in the name of freedom, granted privilege after privilege to the powerful. For people used to Glenbrook's rigid customs, I suppose that sort of change must have been too seductive to resist. Perhaps, but his freedom was not but greed and cruelty. Lady Frederica, I've been searching everywhere for you. A Wolfort messenger. Did you run all this way? What's happened? My lady, I hail from Castle Wolfort, bearing tidings of Lord Seymour. Has he awakened? He has. He is in high spirits and recovering well. And he is most pleased to hear of the capital's recapture. He bids you visit Castle Wolford so he can honor you himself. Oh, I must bring these glad tidings to Saranoa at once. How long it has been since I've seen him smile. There is one more bit of news I have for you, my lady, but it is not so happy. Is there some sort of trouble in the Wolford domain? Bandits are laying waste to the Rosellen village. To our shame, Castle Wolfort does not have enough soldiers to stop this. We would beg Lord Saranoa's wisdom in this matter. The enemy must be powerful indeed. We cannot leave the Rosellen village defenseless. Let us inform the others. Messenger, with us. Well, well. Things are about to get interesting. This is the encampment of House Wolfort. Splendid! For it's Lord Wolfort himself that I came to see. Lead me to him, my good man. <laughs> Big words from a shady-looking fellow in that ridiculous garb. Be gone at once! Ridiculous? Why, I'll have you know that these robes are a treasured relic of... Did I ask about your robes? I said, be gone. all the commotion here. This strange lad demands an audience with you, Lord Sarah Noah, and stubbornly refuses to leave. The name's Nar, grandson and last disciple of the Archmage Grandante, here to offer my services. The Archmage Grandante? Forgive me, but in all my years of studying the arcane arts, I've never once heard that name. You haven't? Oh, I see. I suppose you won't have. Ah, I'm sorry if I offended you. 
You needn't apologize, miss. Let's start over, shall we? Let me show you just what the final disciple of the Archmage Grandante can do. Incredible. Well, what do you think? I've never seen anything quite like it. Were you born with magic like this? Or perhaps... My illustrious grandfather, the Archmage Grandante, that is, taught me all I know. Please, let me join your army. I'm most certain my sorcery could avail you to no end. Lord Saranoa, this boy possesses remarkable talent. I must admit, he would make a formidable addition to our forces. Thank you, Jila. Narv, I welcome you to House Wolfort. Thank you, my lord. My magic will change the world. Just do wait and see. Thank you all for helping to determine the extent of the damage to the capital. This information will be invaluable as we proceed with reconstruction. There is also happy word from Castle Woolfort. My Lord Father is awake. They say he is recovering apace and is already up and walking. Those are glad tidings indeed. He says he would like to see us and hear of all that has passed while he was taken ill. Then what are we waiting for? I'll saddle the horses! Would that we could depart at once, but the messenger brought another piece of news. Bandits plague the outskirts of the Rosalind village. Jerome and his folk are there. They can handle a few mangy thieves, surely. Not according to the messenger. The bandits are proving a formidable foe. Which is why they have asked us for aid. Apologies for my tardiness. It's sudden, I know, but I must ask you a favor. What is it? I suspect Patriot and his royalists are filching relief supplies. We've no proof it's them, but the fact remains. The people in most need of those goods are not receiving them. The matter warrants investigating at the very least, and I would ask for Woolfort's assistance. I see. Well, we were just discussing what we ought to do next. Allow me to explain the three courses of action before us. One, return to Castle Woolfort as my Lord Father requests. Two, defend the Rosellen village from bandits. Or three, remain in the capital to investigate the Royalists. Lord Simon has recovered. What splendid news. If I could only go to him myself and thank him for all House Wolfort has done. But I cannot leave the capital in the throes of a possible scandal. Too many hold the royal family in contempt as it is. That may be the case, but now that Lord Simon has awoken, someone must make sure he is healthy and apprise him of recent events. I would go to Castle Wolfort, Lord Serenor, if it pleases you. My heart breaks for the Rosellen village. Let me go to its defense, even if I must go alone. I cannot allow that. It's far too dangerous a task for one person. Well, I would have the Wolfort soldiers with me, of course. Besides, do you recall our first meeting? Of course I do. You were being assailed by rogues at the port. If you hadn't been there, who knows what would have become of me. But I am not as weak now as I was then. I am stronger, enough that I shall bring no dishonor to House Wolfort's name. My lord, have faith in me. Let me do this. Very well. Hmm. It seems best that Benedict, Frederica, and I each attend to these pressing matters, separately. 
Indeed, but the rest of us cannot be in three places at once. We can only choose one path to take. Bring the scales of conviction. Lord Saranoa. Even so... Listen, lad. I feel this in my gut. It is time to cast our votes. We have three options before us. Return to the Wolfort Domain, depart to the Rosellan Village, or stay in the capital. Approach the Scales of Conviction with your token at the ready. My apologies. Just can't see it your way. The scales of conviction will illuminate the path we've chosen. forward is decided. We return to the Wolfort Domain with Benedict, and inform Father that we have reclaimed the capital. I must return to the Wolfort Domain, to my father's side. Lord Simon will be most pleased to see you, I am certain. Of course. Fulfill your duty to your father. I shall see to things in the capital. And I shall attend to the Rosalind village. 
Please give Lord Simo my best. Oh, Lord Zeranoa. You are returning home? What perfect timing. I was thinking of heading to the Woolfort Domain myself. Might I accompany you? Milo, how'd you sneak into the castle? <laughs> oh, let's just say I have my ways. You might find the companionship of such a capable woman a boon on the road. I know not what her aims are, my lord, but I do know she will be easier to watch by your side. Indeed. All right, Milo, you may come. But you'll be put to work for the household. Understood? Of course, my lord. Then this is farewell for now. King Roland, Federica, until our reunion in the capital. With the capital once more under their control, the members of House Wolffort disperse to the various corners of the Domain. Roland, for his part, works to rid the Crown City of his political enemies. Frederica repairs to the Rosellen village. Serenoa, Benedict, and the others, meanwhile, make a triumphant return to Castle Wolffort, where Lord Simone eagerly awaits their arrival. have returned. You're back, you're back! You made it! Show some respect, lad. They've driven Esfrost from our lands and brought the kingdom back from the brink. And one of them is no less than one of High Zant's saintly seven. Dare I say, achievement greater than Lord Simon ending the Salt Iron War. Fills me with pride enough to think I'd done it myself. I'm sorry, Mr. Lord... King? I didn't mean it. You've done nothing wrong. Address me as you please. I thank you one and all for your efforts in seeing us through to victory. You are too gracious, my lord. As is the Hierophant, who saw fit to bless us with a boatload of salt. And all thanks to you, Lord Serenoa. The Hierophant, you say? Wow! That's amazing! Isn't it just? Bold is the nation that besmirches House Wolfort's honor now! I reckon not even the king himself would speak ill of us now. Course not. It was this lad what made that mask wear it coward of a prince the king. All hail House Wolfort. All hail Mr. Lord. Saranoa is truly a man of the people. And he's got the might to defend him. He's earned their trust. And so he may as well be king. I must say I do appreciate a powerful man. Perhaps I should cast my lot in with the future rather than the past. The cowardly prince they refer to is King Roland, no doubt. Familiarity breeds contempt. I pray that's all it is. Hyzant's overtures are most bold. They mean to lure us in.
Lord Sparag, you've been summoned to the capital with regard to the Death Snow. How long do you intend to defy the Archduke's orders? I've no time for his trifling inquiries, now that Glenbrook has been wrested from our hold. I fear an assault on the duchy is imminent. We must fortify Twinsgate. Such an order would be mine to give, not yours. Be gone! I was a fool to think you could protect the duchy's lands. The Archduke shall render his judgment. Damn his judgment and everything it has wrought! Leaving that fool Thallus in charge of Glenbrook brought this upon us. I shall pass your words on to him then. See that you do, messenger boy. And let him know that if he wishes for me to follow his orders, he will speak the truth and nothing but. Once proud Esfrost has been laid low, and Prince Roland installed as King of Glenbrook. Perhaps now they understand how powerful we are. There is yet more good news. We have coaxed enough power from the Elfric to power the Automaton. Oh, have the spoils of war ever been so great? A question House Wolfort no doubt asks themselves. Are you not troubled by their gains? The people of Glenbrook rally around their newly returned hero as we speak. I fear we have unwittingly created an enemy to rival Esfrost, or worse. Which is precisely why I have sent Milo to watch their every move. We shall be informed of any plots against us in due course. And you are content to trust this, Milo? What does it matter if I trust her? The goddess shall render final judgment to any and all traitors. Be they spies, or one of the saintly seven. Indeed. May we never live to witness such a tragedy. How fares my father? He is most lucid, my lord, though asleep at the moment. I fear the malady has sapped much of his strength. I see. Hmm. Just not all doom and gloom, though. Word of your recent exploits lifted his spirits considerably. He cannot wait to hold a feast and praise you before the entire house. Ha! May he forget he said that upon waking. You should accept the honor with grace, my lord. He is your father, after all. I would gladly accept, of course. Even hearing secondhand that he takes pride in my efforts threatens to swell my head. The young lord has reclaimed Glenbrook, Lady Destra. He fought as valiantly as Simon or Regna. Would you were here to witness it. Forgive me, Benedict. No, 
Forgive me, Lord Saranoa. I shall take my leave. Nonsense. You are the reason I stand here today, and I would tell Mother that myself. I bid you stay. How very gracious of you. I owe much to Lord Simon and Lady Destra. They filled my life with purpose. They left you in my charge. But you have already demonstrated your power for all the realm to see. You now walk on your own two feet. I have no doubt you can lead Norzelia into a glorious new era of peace and prosperity with King Roland by your side. Speak frankly, Benedict. What is it you wish to say? I have done all I can for you, Lord Saranoa. I will resign following the evening's festivities. Anna shall take my place if it pleases you. You would leave me unmoored at a time like this? I know the time is not ideal, but your father is not long for this world. I would repay my debt to him by caring for him in his final days. After that, I shall stand watch over their eternal resting place and regale them with tales of your great deeds. I see there shall be no swaying you. My gratitude for you flows like the mighty Norzelia River. Even so, I would ask for a moment more to make up my mind. Understood, my lord. Then let us return to the castle and prepare for the evening's feast. the gathering each and every one of them eager to get to know you better to advance their own ends be on your guard I shouldn't think that would be necessary father has gathered those he trusts most to lend me their aid for that I am grateful whatever the case we mustn't keep them waiting I thank you kindly for the invitation, Lord Saranoa. Or shall I address you as Glenbrook Savior? Ha! You needn't go that far, no. I disagree. Your accomplishments speak for themselves. Power becomes you. It makes you alluring to people such as myself. Pray, let me accompany you for the evening and beyond. I shall need a moment to consider your most gracious offer. <sighs> it's a thing of beauty when they grow up, eh, hey, Benedict? It is, and yet it can leave one feeling strangely bereft. Aye. Well, that's fatherhood for you.
Simone lives! Haven't seen him in ages. He looks well. Thank the stars. Let me take your hand. I can manage on my own, my boy. I've not felt this good in some time. But I shall want you by my side the rest of the evening, that I may hear of your exploits in full. Nothing would make me happier, father. I thank you all for gathering to celebrate with me House Wolfort's victories. Against all odds, my son and his stalwart allies have reclaimed the Kingdom of Glenbrook. I felt a great weight lifted from my shoulders as I watched him grow into a worthy heir. I dare say I've never been so proud. Permit me the indulgence of offering a toast to my son, my pride, and... Anna! Huh? Father! Assassins. Eyes on me, father. Steady yourself. Let my guard down. But it takes more than that. To fell Simone Walford. Then more you shall have. Not today. Thank you, Milo. Save your breath. We're not rid of the assassins. Kill them, Milo. Gladly. Kill them all. We shan't have a chance like this again. Patriot! What are you? You traitorous cur! Leave it to me.
The Wolforts are a blight upon this land. A blight I will see cleansed. Your treachery ends here, Patriot! On my house's honor, I swear! We must bring this conflict to a close. Lord Simon is in no condition to fight. Come what may, I have to see that Lord Simon and the boy live. Patriot and his ilk must die. Keep my father alive at all costs. Time to work. to do. last breath. Leave everything to me. What are you and your cups about? My apologies. Well, congratulations are in order. You've done enough damage. You're holding Glenbrook back, Wolford. I throb them of You are sight. so naive. Ah! Hey! Defeat is not an option. No mercy on the battlefield. We doing this? You're open! I'll take you on! what I can do. Don't be afraid. No, I cannot fall here. It is not my time. Shall we begin? Plain to see. House Wolf shall persevere! Yeah! It's 
over. Yeah! None of you will survive this. I shall show you how it's done. Ah. Impossible! Ah! Me too! Ah! Can't you have done it now? Ah! Me too! Look at me learning. Time to take flight. Engulfs you. Leave everything to me. What are you in your cups about? I'm in your debt. Not bad, not bad. I shall try my level best. My turn! Have at you! Ah! I'll make this quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you what I can do. I... I'll make you proud, Grandfather. My growth is plain to see. I... No! So... Shall we dance? Light as a butterfly. Game you missed. After me? Are oh, you? Is it over? Your orders? Suffer. <laughs> A sound strike. Have at you! You won't escape. Yeah. 
Victory is within reach. I pray this was not my only chance to destroy them. I shan't make the mistake of underestimating them again. Was my sword ever so heavy? Age is a persistent foe. Ah! Ah! Be strong, father. I shall get you treatment at once. Saranoa, please. If I must go, at least it was alongside you on the battlefield. Enough of this talk! You will yet live! I've seen scores of soldiers perish, my son. Death comes for us all. Does it not, dear Benedict? Forgive me, my lord. I could not keep you safe. I beg you, give the three of us uh, a moment together. As you wish, Eridor. Aye. Wolfrits are as dangerous as I feared. They must be wiped out for the good of all Glenbrook. There is no escape, Patriot. Tell me why a royalist like you would attack Lord Simon. Yes. Why would you threaten to tear asunder a newly restored Glenbrook? Restored? Restored to what? The duchy killed your king and controls your land, and you've what, exactly? The collected ashes of the royal family? Those who joined the duchy thrived. Those who resisted were ground beneath their heel. The nobles and commoners have never been further apart, though beneath it all. They are bound not by the king's memory, but greed. Perhaps. But we can unite them behind King Roland. The weakest link of them all. <laughs> the prince who forsook his family. A ruler in nothing but name if the people speak true. The Wolford reputation stains him, and it shall be his undoing. So that's your angle. Enough slander. You're blind to it. Admit it. You rebuffed the Esfrosti army, curried favor with the Saintly Seven, protected Roland, and immediately installed him as king. You think yourselves above the high houses of Glenbrook, nay, above his majesty himself. Who would not want to rid themselves of such a stain? You suggest King Roland gave the order? Would he possess such rationality? We would not be in this mess if he did. Thus I decided to intervene for the good of the kingdom. So we need only kill you. 
That is a mercy. Only Benedict and I know what I'm about to tell you. I bid you listen well and remain calm. I am not your father, at least not by birth. You are the blood of our former King Ragnar. What? I promised His Majesty I would hide the truth from you. Forgive me. Destro was indeed your mother. That much was no lie. She was a commoner in the Crown City. A woman of little means and low station, but possessed of unparalleled intellect and boundless affection. He would often sneak out into the city in disguise. Fate united them on one of those evenings, and they fell in love. Thus, you were brought into the world. He wished to marry her, but her low station made that unthinkable. In time, the royalists found out and plotted her murder. So Lord Simone took her as his wife to keep her safe. And so I was born the heir of House Wolfort. Sadly, your dear mother passed not long after you were born. It was she who named you. It was the one thing she was able to pass down to you. And now I... I leave you this. The Royal Signet. Only one of Glenbrook's royal line may wear it. I was to keep it until the time was right. And so it is now. Father, you leave me completely unmoored. What am I to do with this unspeakable knowledge? I leave you with a heavy burden. This I know better than any. Be strong, Sarah Noah. Forge your own path. Lead the people. Keep watch over him, Benedict. I will. No, Father. Stay with me. Please. All this and still, you call me Father. I am proud of you, my son. Please don't go. Father! Please! So Patriot meant to eliminate House Wolfort to protect the crown. Yes, he admitted as much himself. I can assure you he acted alone. King Roland was not a party to the plot. That is fortunate, yes. But the mere fact of it could tear Glenbrook apart, were it to be made known. Lord Simone's assassination must be kept secret, my lord. You would have me say his illness claimed him, then? I thank you for your assistance, my lord. Speak not a word of this to anyone. I shan't, for the good of House Wolfort. I cannot fathom why he thought us to be enemies. We mean no harm to the royal family. Misplaced as his fears may be, we must stand ready to defend ourselves, in word and deed, from any who may reach similar conclusions. That includes King Roland himself. You heard Anna. Roland didn't issue the order. 
What are you plotting, Benedict? I seek only to ensure House Wolfort's survival. Lord Simon was murdered. Other enemies may well be within our ranks as we speak. They must be stopped at all costs, no matter who they are. Can I count on your continued guidance, Benedict? Glenbrook's throne is yours for the taking. You have the claim and the might to back it up. Your Lord Father beseeched you to forge your own path and lead the people. Might you not best accomplish that if you were king? <sighs> Perhaps. But I would sooner fall upon my own sword than usurp the throne from my friend. The truth of my lineage does not leave this room. I shall keep it hidden along with this ring. <sighs> As you wish, my lord. I trust your judgment. I come bearing a missive from King Roland. He requests your presence in the Crown City immediately. He has frosty survivors are on the move. They leave me no time to mourn. Lead the way. Roland, Benedict, and Frederica regroup back in the capital. But what they experienced while they were away could very well alter the course of destiny itself. Is there something on your mind, Roland? Sarah Noah. I do not know what I should do. Did something happen in the capital? No, that problem has been dealt with. I've made sure those damned royalists will never cause trouble again. Was such harsh punishment truly necessary? Of course it was. When they should have been helping to rebuild the kingdom, they instead profited off the people's hardship. And on top of that, they sought to string me up as their puppet king. I understand, but... You know what they told me? They said that is what Glenbrook truly is. That it must be ruled with the royalist careful mediation between the royal family and their loyal subjects. They said good kings need not think for themselves. They said my father and my brother understood that. Even if that is true, you have the power to change it. I tried. That is the entire reason I took the throne. But nothing has changed. No matter how many corrupt aristocrats I've cast out, this kingdom has always been broken. As Frost's invasion just ensured we could never put the pieces back together. I do not have the strength to reconcile a land and people torn apart by hatred and greed. I cannot give Glenbrook what it needs, king though I may be. Roland. Apologies, my friend. I should not burden you with my woes. You burden me with nothing. But if you are struggling... All is well. Trust me. So long as you are by my side. Saranoa. 
I would speak with you before we meet with the others. Is something the matter? I was led to believe the Rosellen village escaped all but unscathed. Pray, look at this. A book? We recovered it from a band of brigands. It once belonged to the Esfrosti archives. It was authored by one Orlea, my mother. Inside is the truth about the Roselle. Nay, about all Norzelia. The truth? How would your mother have that knowledge? The Rosellan people have long passed down the secret of the salt. My mother was a chosen keeper of that history. In ancient times, the Roselle lived in the southernmost reaches of Norzelia, in a place called Centralia. It is said Centralia was on the shore of a vast expanse of salt water they called the Sea. Back then, the Norzelia we know was at the bottom of that sea, but a cataclysm dried up all the water, and thus this land came to be. The salt crystallized and sank into the earth, the very earth we now walk upon. Salt beneath our feet. After the cataclysm, only one small lake of salt remained. War raged on and on as people fought to control it. The Roselle tried to stop the fighting by digging up a giant pillar of salt to show everyone the secret they had long kept. But Hyzant, whose power over Norzelia came from controlling the lake and the salt it produced, could not allow the truth to get out. They captured the Roselle, branded them criminals who tried to seize control of the salt for themselves, and confined them to the lake. And what of the pillar? Hyzant stole it and hid it, inside the very statue of the goddess that towers over the source. How can you be certain? During the uprising, my mother broke the statue and recovered a fragment of the pillar within. The salt crystal found in the Rosellen village. Incredible. If what you say is true, the teachings are a lie. This will shake Hyzan to its very foundations. And we would be able to free the Rosell from their imprisonment at the source. With so much at stake, we must be careful in what we do now. Frederica, I would ask for more time to think this through. Of course. I have every faith in House Wolford. And in you. That is the extent of what happened during our various endeavors. The passing of my Lord Father, the Royalist Scandal, and the book that revealed the truth about the Roselle and the Salt. It is time we consider what we shall do to overcome these obstacles facing us. I still cannot believe how quickly Lord Simon's condition worsened. It is most devastating. Sarah Noah, did your father say nothing else to you before he... He... he bade me lead House Wolfort well. I see. And we must all do what we can to help you honor that request. Your Majesty, what do you plan to do about the Royalists who misappropriated supplies? As far as I've been able to discern, those involved acted out of greed and self-interest. They must all be punished. Nothing less than exile from the Kingdom or execution will suffice. But there are those among them who support the Glenbrook line. Will that not impact your governance? Perhaps. But to pardon their crimes would kindle the people's ire. We must make an example of them. To appease the people. To make clear the consequences of engaging in such foolhardy behavior. Did something else happen in the capital, King Roland? Nothing you need concern yourself with. But I must say, I was shocked to learn of that Rosellen legend. 
Do you suppose the contents of that book could be true? The part about their homeland, Centralia, that sits upon a vast saltwater sea? That of the untapped salt crystals beneath Norzelia? Or that, in order to monopolize the salt trade, Hyzant fabricated the Roselle's sins? That the pillar of salt Hyzant stole from the Roselle is hidden within the statue of the goddess? If any of it is true, it would turn everything we know on its head. It would mean the teachings of the Holy State are not but lies. It does sound unbelievable, but we have already seen part of this legend for ourselves. The crystal from the Rosellen village? That crystal is a fragment from the pillar within the statue of the goddess. One my mother obtained during the uprising. It fits perfectly. Apparently, Lady Orlea penned the book detailing the legend for Frederica. She did. She enchanted it so no one could open it, but left me the key to break the spell. This pendant. I doubt a mother would go to such lengths to lie to her daughter. Then we agree the legend contains at least a seed of truth. Your Majesty, we have received word that the survivors of the Duchy's army are amassing. What? Where? At the Grand Norzellian Mines. But we cannot be sure what they are doing. None of our scouts have returned. Those frosty dogs! We will speak later, Saranoa. First, we must put down whatever the Duchy is planning at the mines. I need you and your people beside me. Of course. We shall ready ourselves for the battle at once. Extraction is nearly finished. We've secured the amount we were told. Seems such a waste to just leave the rest. Don't think Archduke Gustadolf gives two shites. Hurry it up. We need to be done here before Glenbrook catches on to us. Sir. Sure. 